What's up guys and welcome back to the channel. My name is Michael Sasser, boudoir photographer in Los Angeles, California. I've been having so much fun hanging out with you guys. I've been loving the comments section, good or bad. Good, you know, I know I'm, I'm helping you guys out. Bad gives me tips on improving my videos or just gives me things to laugh about. Idiot video. But I feel like in about the last six months, I've been growing more than ever, and I owe most of that to you guys. Now, what I shoot is boudoir, and it's a little bit of a misunderstood niche. Or you might pronounce it boudoir if you're from France, or if you're American and you wanna sound really fancy. Photographing models, however, is really glamour photography, and I really only use models to shoot these YouTube videos. So two of the most common questions I get asked on this channel are how do you find models? And am I paying the models or are the models paying me? And to answer that first question, I recommend that you check out this video that I made about how to find models. In glamour photography, sometimes the model gets paid, sometimes the photographer gets paid, sometimes you both get paid. But the general rule is that if you're an experienced photographer and it's a new model, then the photographer is gonna get paid. If you are a newer photographer and it's an experienced model, then you'll probably be paying the model. And the scenario in which you both get paid is you're both being hired by a swimsuit brand. You create content for them. So brand, photographer, model, you know, money. Now, just to be clear, I don't make six figures from shooting models. I do that from shooting everyday women. That's what boudoir is. So now I wanna explain a little bit more clearly the differences between boudoir and glamour. Hit it. I want to define the difference between glamour photography and boudoir photography. Now you guys are seeing me shoot a lot of models on this channel and probably assuming that that's how I'm making my living. So I only photograph models when I'm teaching you guys something new on YouTube or when I wanna try something new, I get a new camera or a new something for the studio. But this is essentially a trade between the model and I. So she gets really good pictures, I get to try something new, win-win. So the reason why I use models instead of my boudoir clients for the YouTube videos is because I know that they're gonna be comfortable in front of the camera, they take less uh, instruction for posing, and I know that they're gonna allow me to use the images because that's, that's kind of the whole point of their career. Whereas my boudoir clients are everyday women and they may or may not want their images shared. So who gets paid for a boudoir shoot? The photographer does, and I'll explain more on that later in the video. Okay, so let's get us a good definition for what glamour photography is. Let's look this up. Define glamour photography. Okay, Wiktionary? Whatever happened to Webster? Wiktionary says, glamour photography, a form of photography involving the taking of pictures, <laughs> that's terrible, of models which are intended to be erotic without being pornographic. Photography intended to glamorize the subject. My friend Nino is just an amazing glamour photographer and he wrote an article on this topic, actually, I'm gonna link it below, but I reached out to him and I asked him, what are some of the things that define uh, glamour photography? And he states that the typical glamour photography client intentionally sets out to pose in front of the camera as his or her career, has posed in front of cameras many times, in some cases thousands of times, has posed in front of cameras in various states of dress and undress depending on the specific industry goals. Man, Nino knows how to write like contract worthy copy. They have every intention of getting paid to pose in front of the camera or is already doing so. They spend a great deal of time on their physique because their bodies are a big part of their career and they are mostly in their younger 20s. So that description defines most of the women you guys have seen in my videos. Olivia here has done some acting, she's done some modeling, she's been on a few TV shows. Hannah was on America's Next Top Model. She's also booking jobs with clothing labels and swimsuit companies, and these are their careers. Okay, so now let's talk about boudoir, which for the last few years has been my exclusive career and how I make my living. Let's see if Webster has a definition for this one. Boudoir definition. Okay, we have it's a woman's bedroom, dressing room, or private sitting room. That's, that's not it at all. Uh, let's check a more current source. Urban Dictionary. The Urban Dictionary says, what Lady Gaga looked into while her mother rolled her hair and put her lipstick on? 
Here we go, an intimate photo of a man or woman suggestively covered, but not fully nude. If you ask a lot of different boudoir photographers, their definition of boudoir photography will probably vary, but overall, some of the consistencies are that it's an empowering form of photography for everyday women, a kind of phototherapy that changes their perspective on themselves. Many people go through life feeling less than because of the expectations that society places on us, uh, our image, our looks, so what we wear, and this is kind of a f you to the whole system. Okay, so who's your typical boudoir photography client? Uh, it is someone who, Actually, there's really no typical boudoir photography client. I personally have photographed teachers, lawyers, nurses, women who are ad executives, stay-at-home moms, women from the ages of 18 to 61 and in all shapes and sizes. The commonality of the boudoir client is why she's coming in for that experience. I photograph women who are getting married and they wanna give this as a gift to their grooms because it's so much better than a watch. I photograph women who are recently divorced and they're looking to find beauty in themselves again. I photographed a woman who was in a car accident. She had reconstructive surgery on her face. She was trying to fall in love with the new version of herself. So they're not doing this for fame or for their career. They're actually super nervous when they come in for their sessions. I actually had a woman who had a panic attack on her way over here. She had to pull over the car and, and pause and regroup for a sec before she could actually come to the studio. That's crazy. She actually teared up when she saw her pictures for the first time. It is that powerful. And to be able to make an impact in someone's life like that, I just think that's the best thing that I can imagine doing. And that huge impact that you're having on someone's life is the reason why you can charge thousands of dollars for this service. And that's why you probably have seen a disconnect between the images here on my YouTube channel and the ones that are on my Instagram or on my website, because those are of my actual clients of whom I'm not tagging and I'm not using their real names. And the images here are of models so that I can share some more of my knowledge and I know the pictures are going to be shared. So what does this mean for you and the type of photography that you want to shoot? Do you want to focus on shooting models and shooting for brands like swimwear and lingerie and fashion and clothing? Then glamour photography is for you. And most of the posing and tips on workflow are still gonna to apply to you. If you wanna have an impact in somebody's life and you wanna create an amazing and memorable experience for everyday women, then boudoir is the type of photography for you. But I want you to know that both are viable careers. Brands are willing to spend big money on glamour photographers if they're good. And I've known boudoir photographers that have been incredibly successful in both huge cities like Los Angeles and in small towns of under 50,000 people. So if you have more questions about boudoir photography or how to get started, I would love to hear your holdups. And if you wanna learn a little bit more about my business and how I got started and how you can too, I've got an awesome boudoir photography course, which I will link in the description. Thanks for hanging out. And until the next video, I hope you get out and do at least one photo shoot of something that you love. So for tip number three, I don't know what to do with my hands. Okay, so what are we supposed to do with our hands? Oftentimes, the biggest mistake that I see photographers make, where did you find the models for this session? Since I have been shooting so much more for YouTube, so much more for sharing content for you guys,